Hi, welcome to our video on the arc tangent, so or the inverse tangent function. It should be written as the arc tan right of some x value equals theta. All that means is what what angle theta gives us the uh, x value here. So or we could say the inverse tangent function of x equals theta. So those are the two functions we're looking at in this video. And let's just start off by by looking at the arctan of, or say, the tangent, the inverse tangent of negative 1. What, what angle does that give us? Well, let's just talk about tangent for a moment. You might remember that that tangent of an angle equals the sine of theta over the cosine of theta. And in our unit circle, the sine of theta refers to our y value, and the cosine of theta refers to our x value. Um, and what does that mean? Well, it's fun to think about the unit circle for a lot of reasons, but one of them is it really helps you think about tangent. If you look at the unit circle, I'll just sketch one out, and we pick some, some angle. Let's draw this out draw this line right here. I'll use a different color though. Let's draw this angle. Right? We have this triangle with this angle and to get to this point right here we have to go this distance which is x or, or cosine of theta and then this distance right here which is sine of theta or y. Those are both distances and the sine of theta is that's the distance of y, and the cosine of theta, that's the distance of x, and delta y or delta x, that's just it's a slope. So the tangent of theta, you can think of it as the slope of a line in a unit circle. And that's going to bring up some interesting connections. So in this problem, we're saying what angle gives us a slope of, of negative 1? So to help us figure that out, let's draw a brand new fresh unit circle. And we'll look at what what really happens when our slope is negative one. Draw the circle. Okay. Well, when the, the slope is negative one, right, we have a line that's going down kind of like this, right here. I'll just I'll extend it past the unit circle. So that's the slope of negative one, and what we're dealing with is our angle here, or here. You can think of these two angles, but I'm gonna use these angles here because they're based right off the x-axis and well to get this line right our slope is negative one so we have our delta y and our delta x over here and we know that we take delta y over delta x our, our slope value we're getting negative one so delta y over delta x equals negative one and if our slope is negative one, that means that the y and the x have to be have to have the same absolute value, right? Because if the slope is one, they both the exact same value. If it's negative one, one of them is positive, one of them is negative. But either way, these two distances here have to be equal because when you divide the y distance by the x distance, you get one, and that only happens when they're two equal values. So, so what does that mean? Well. That also means these two side lengths are equal. And when that happens, we have a 45, 45, 90 degree right triangle. And we can use the Pythagorean theorem to figure out what's going on. It's also a little bit obvious that the two legs have to be equal that are across in these two angles. And in previous videos, we've gone over this, but you can figure it out, right? The hypotenuse is 1. So it's what squared plus what squared is 1 squared. These things are equal. We get 2x squared equals 1 squared, which is 1, divided by 2, we get x squared is equal to 2, we get the square root, we get radical 2 over 2, and then rationalize, so whew, we do all that, and we get that delta y and equals radical 2 over 2, and delta x equals radical 2 over 2. And that, that makes sense if we think about this, except for one thing. Delta y is going to be negative radical 2 over 2 because we're drawing this line down here so it brings us to this point that's downward. So our point here is radical 2 over 2 
negative radical 2 over 2. Anyway, so what that tells me is that the tangent, right, the inverse tangent of negative 1, it's got to be equal to our theta here, right? Our sine of theta over cosine of theta, so it's, or it's equal to negative 45 degrees. And why is that? Well, this angle, theta right here, is going down uh, 45 degrees. So you can think of it as negative, negative 45 degrees. And that's the arctan of negative 1. Also, you think about what, what would the arctan or the inverse tan function of positive 1 be? That would just be positive 45, right? Because then we'd have this line. we get a different color. We have this line right here. That's not good. This, this line right here going up. And that's a 45 degree angle this way with a slope of 1. So that would be positive 45 degrees. And we can look at a little bit more about what's happening. Let me just get the pen tool set. All right, so when we're, when we're working on all this, we need to think about one last thing, and we talked about this in the last video as well for, for sine. You think about domain and range, right, of the tangent function. Okay, and these are actually going to match up a little bit, but with some small differences. So keep in mind that the the tangent just represents the slope of a line in the unit circle. So here's my unit circle. And, you know, in the last example, we had this slope right, oops, we had a slope of negative 1. And that, and that went right across the unit circle from, let's say, this point right here up to that point over there. Let me highlight those two points. Okay, well, what does that mean? Well, if tangent is referring to the line of this, the, this slope right here, well then this point is going to be x negative y, right, to get there to go an x distance, then down y. This point is going to be negative x and positive y. Well, x over negative y is going to be negative xy. Negative x over y is going to be negative xy. These two points are equal. So for, for these angles here, right, we're getting two of the same tangent values. And just like in the other videos when we try to explain this process, if we know negative 45 degrees gives me this point right here, which gives me the tangent, well, if I just go around the circle again and again and again, right, I'm going to keep getting back to the same point. So you want to restrict that. We don't want our function, right, we don't want our function here for, let's say, what was it? It was negative pi over 4 or negative 45 degrees, and then another rotation, negative pi over 4, plus 2 pi, and so forth. We don't want all these, rotation, these rotations being counted. So we restrict our range, just like we did for sine, pretty much, from uh, negative 90 degrees uh, for theta up to positive 90. Or we can write it as theta goes from negative pi over 4, negative pi over 2, excuse me, up to pi over 2. Notice um, the tangent the range is not at 90 or negative 90, and it's not at pi over 2 or negative pi over 2, because at pi over 2, which is right up here, and at negative pi over 2 down here, we have a vertical line, and our slope is undefined when our line is vertical. So we can go anywhere here in the range, right? We just can't go up here in the vertical or, or down here as well, because our slope is undefined at those vertical lines. Now, the domain could be anything because, um, let's just write it down. And the way, an easy way to write down the domain is anything is we could say that, well, x can go from positive, anything less than positive infinity and anything greater than negative infinity. Oops, it's my infinity sign. And that makes sense, right? Because we're, the slope could really be any value. Even though if you're restricting, just like we did for sine, between this quadrant and this quadrant down here, all these lines just tilt a little bit. You can get any slope you want, right? So the, the angles are trapped in here. But really, these, these slopes could be any number.